Now, a good friend of mine uh, and anybody into the clown kink should definitely check her out is uh, Lydia Wilt. And she was one of those people who got me into the whole scene in the first place. Uh, wonderful person, but I, I told her I was gonna use this forever because it's so perfect. Uh, our goal as adult clowns is to turn your phobias into philia. Hey, it's me, it's Mr. You probably know me from Munch, but this is a little bit different of a show. We're not gonna have a panel. It's gonna be a one-on-one -on -one interview and we're hoping to keep this running and we'll get more guests and kind of get deeper dives into adult content and the, the world of the adult industry in many different facets from fetish specialists to coaches and other experts and educators. So the first episode that you're gonna see of the Peep Show is going to be with a fetish clown. Um, she specializes in doing uh, adult shows and you know for clown fetish, which includes balloons, latex, and, and a whole plethora of other things. With that said. I hope you enjoyed the first episode. Leave a comment, like, follow, listen, rate me on Spotify and all the other things. Um, no matter what you need to do, uh, just make sure you do it. And I look forward to hearing from you. Love y'all. Buckle up. So I'm here. This is the first episode of what will uh, officially be called The Peep Show. It gives us a look into adult content, adult content creators, kink, relationships on a more one-on-one -on -one basis rather than how we do it on lunch, which is with a whole panel um, I have with me today, Confetti La Cupcakes. Uh, hello, hello. Nice to meet you. How's it going? It's squeaky today. They they did squeak. I think it was a little quiet. My mic didn't oh, quite pick it up, I don't think. Okay. I think the squeaky booth might be my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it makes for the best hugs. It does. It does. So, so how you doing? I'm great. It's been a decent day. Napped a couple on and off things. And got some things done. Not right. much, but something. You know, one or two things counts. That's you absolutely. Your, if you just got pinata. one thing done, it counts. That's right. Got to see your pinata pop. That awesome. was delightful. I was and excited for that. For the record, that's not a euphemism. <laughs> So, darling, tell us a little bit about like your background. I know that you're actually a professional clown on top of what we're going to be talking about a little bit today. How did that get started? Correct. So, I have always been uh, into clowns in some way or another. Um, you know, they, uh, they talk about like a special connection with uh, the first thing that you get as a toy when you're born, you know. Mine just so happened to be one of those uh, plushy. It was a stuffed animal, but it had a hard plastic face, and it was actually a clown. And um, I, I remember loving it so much and uh, going to the circus as a kid. So doing uh, what we call hometown clowning, which is uh, county fairs, kids parties, things like that, I've been doing off and on for probably 12, 13 years now. Um, I branched out into uh, the adult side of it when uh, the panorama hit uh, and there were no more kids parties going on and blowing up a balloon and giving it to someone became attempted murder. You know what I mean? It was uh, it was rough time. <laughs> 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 so um, it's been it's been uh, like a lifelong kind of back and forth for me as far as clowns go. That's awesome. So like how does yeah. like did you, did you go to like an official clown college or is it just something you kind of did. So I did. After um, after over a decade of doing it, I decided to further my clown education, and I went to the Academy of Clown Art uh, in Eatonton, Georgia. Highly recommend for anybody who wants to uh, 
learn more about that and wants to travel. Uh, some very, very prestigious teachers there. Uh, one of the founding members from Cirque du Soleil, some boss clowns from Ringling Brothers. I mean, some of some of these some of these people are like they're they're like upper echelon as far as uh, the clown world goes, you know. So I was really lucky to go there and I studied eccentric clowning because I don't exactly fit in because I do a mix of different kinds of clowning. I didn't quite fit into any one course. Uh, yeah. That's quite but interesting. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think there's like different categories, I guess. I don't know. I guess it makes sense though. Yeah, so there's there's tons of different kinds of clowns. So just to just to name some of the the main ones, uh, you've got circus clowns, you've got uh, ministry clowns, which base around uh, church. You've got uh, therapy clowns, which are the hospital clowns, um, like the the ones who go in and they visit like the sick people. You know, like Hatch Adams style clowns. Uh, you've got what I did originally, which was hometown clowning. Um, yeah, there's, there's a ton of different kinds. <laughs> so you said you've been doing it like 12 years, 12, 13 years. That's yeah. Somewhere around there. That's, that's a long time. So what, besides the pandemic shutting everything down, was there anything else that kind of drew you to the adult side of, of the clown? So funny enough, I, um, being that I dabble in both sides, I kind of ride this weird line, weird line where my conservative friends think I'm too alternative and my very alternative friends think that I'm too vanilla because, you know what I mean? That's like all these misconceptions that you get on uh, both sides. So um, funny enough, I was brought into the adult clowning side of it because uh, some friends of mine who did uh, like clown burlesque needed someone to bake a cake. And I was the only clown they knew, even though I did kids parties specifically at the time, I was the only one that they knew that also did the baking and the cake decorating. And so they wanted me to bake an anatomically correct butt cake for a burlesque show. Very nice. And uh, so I said, okay, yeah, right. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then they sent me the picture and we're talking gaping. You know, they wanted it correct. <laughs> You know, okay, okay. and uh, I said, okay, well, this is bizarre, but like, let's, let's see how it goes. You know, this is going to be fun. And uh, I was running so late that I had, uh, I had, um, <laughs> I had been running late and I had to finish the fondant on the ferry on my way to Seattle. So I was finishing this gaping ass and that like it was all the bit you know on the ferry and i definitely got some weird looks and uh went there and uh presented this cake for someone's birthday and the clown girls come in and they start having their way with this cake now if i had known that they were going to do that instead of eat the cake, I would have frosted a bunch of pancakes and would have been on my merry way because they didn't need the cake, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, okay, yeah. Seems like a, yeah, yeah. a lot of work to, to be destroyed so quickly. Yeah, so quickly uh, with a bunch of clowns and strap-ons. You know what I'm saying? It was... Uh, it was <laughs> It was definitely a good um, introduction for me on how spicy the uh, adult clown world could be. And I was just kind of fascinated. You know, I I dabbled in being a kitten at a burlesque show here and there. But the thought of clown and burlesque together, I was just fascinated. You know, so with the with the panorama, um, I, I it was kind of like the perfect opportunity. You know, I'm like, could I combine these two or would it be too weird? You know, uh, and it wasn't. And I love it. <laughs> now I need to find like a clown burlesque show or something because I'm very, very curious myself. Um, like I'm going to send you I'm going to send you a bunch of links for people that I know in your area that actively throw shows. 
All right, good, good, good. <laughs> so you said something a minute ago that there was a lot of misconceptions from like both sides of, of your friend circle. So, so what are like some common misconceptions? Because ultimately, it comes down to like a clown fetish for for a lot of people to to get involved with you, right? So what are some of those misconceptions as far as like clown fetishes go and stuff? Yeah, some people don't realize they're um, having misconceptions, obviously. Um, but there's a lot of, oh, if you're, if you're a clown for adults, then you're infantilizing yourself. Or, you know, it, it, it goes along with some very touchy, not okay uh, subject. Um, and that's obviously not the case. So the adult side of clown, when obviously when you're clowning for kids, you are becoming more of a child, right? Whereas the adult clowning side of it is more of like a bimbification mm -hmm. style of it. You're, you're accentuating the breast, you're making, making your butt larger. You know, the walk is more exact. It's more of like, you're still adding the comedy elements to it, but you're not, um, you're not treating yourself or anyone else as children, you know, and that's a huge misconception. And it's really gross uh, to be approached with that, either in an accusatory way or in a wishful thinking kind of way. Either way, it's a gross interaction. But we're doing, we're doing the whole scene is kind of doing a lot of work to. Um, fix that and I've seen I've seen a lot of progress recently uh, it was even to the point where the uh, clown school that I went to when I went it was the first year where they actually allowed eccentric clowns like myself just because um, you know being clowns you're actors and it's kind of it's kind of gatekeepy sometimes it's kind of pretentious sometimes you know you you step in and you're doing something differently and people don't like it and they want to make those assumptions so there's a lot of misconceptions about that most of them are gross <laughs> <laughs> most of them are gross um but some of them are fun you know i've had some misconceptions where oh so you do um you do fun things with a rubber chicken or something. And you're like, well, no, but that's actually hysterical. And now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna claim myself as the champion chicken choker of the world. You know what I mean? Sometimes those misconceptions turn into that joke. And then, I'm, you're always trying to find the clown in things, you know? <laughs> <laughs> there they are. There they are. <laughs> um. I got distracted. I thought about the, the squeaky boobs for a second. Sorry about that. Um, see, that, <laughs> that's one of those things. Like the clown thing never occurred to me until I met you and I hugged you and your boobs squeaked. And I was like, I need that in my life. Like I need squeaky boobs somewhere. See, it adds humor to it. I feel like, I feel like of all things, porn takes itself too seriously. Hundred mm percent. -hmm. Why are you taking yourself so seriously? It's funny. It's it all funny. <laughs> Something like in, in personal life, you know, it's enjoy the the goofs and the, the problems and the, the missteps yeah. and things like that. So, yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. I think it helps a lot with like, like kink situations, too, because when you're finding the humor in things, you don't have time to like feel uh, like ashamed of things, like being ashamed of your body. If you're finding humor in the fact that you just made like a weird noise or something with a with a body part you know what i mean like you don't have time to get it's like it's like a shedding of the ego kind of thing it also makes hard conversations easier 100 mm -hmm. percent. <laughs> so obviously there are a lot of major differences between you know doing kids shows and doing stuff for adults what are some different kind of rules for the adult shows if that makes any sense like you know Think that so uh, with the adult shows so adult shows have a lot less rules the rules that are very clearly defined and very uh like 
concrete in my mind are actually for the kids shows. Like the idea that you can never remove your nose in front of your audience because to you, they're a character. You don't want to ruin the magic. Now with an adult show, sometimes people want to see you smear your makeup off and it would be okay. You're not ruining the magic for them. You know what I mean? So I would say a lot of those rules that are very concrete and can't be broken are for the other side of that. Whereas adult clowning, it's more, it's more open to interpretation. I like that. You know I, what I, mean? I didn't think of it that way. I figured it'd be more, more stringent on certain rules the other way. That's really cool. Um, I can see that. I mean, you know, I remember being a kid and clowns at birthday parties and stuff. And there's like, yeah, it's like going thing. to it's like going to Disneyland and having Mickey Mouse take his freaking head off because he wants to smoke a cigarette or something. It like kind of ruins the whole <laughs> the whole idea of it. You know what I mean? So That's if I were to like take my nose off and be like, all right, get out of here, you fucking <laughs> you fucking kids, you know? They'd be like, ah, oh, it would ruin it would ruin the whole thing, you know. So yeah, those those are the rules that are strict. It would absolutely make my day to see that happen, though. At, at my kids, I, you know, <laughs> those are some of those intrusive and in, intrusive thoughts that you get as a kids entertainer. You know what I mean? You're like, man, that kid has been kicking me in the face all day. You know, sometimes you just want to scare the bejesus. You want to turn around and be like, ha! Ah! Just scare the, you know, scare the fuck out of him. You never do, but it's fun to think about. It makes you feel better and cope. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how clown phobias start. <laughs> yeah, and that's how phobias start. It's actually very consent driven. Is it? Which is another reason why I thought it was great that you invited me on this talk because it doesn't matter um, adults, kids, you know, either way, the phobia is so deeply ingrained. And it all comes down 99% of the time. It comes down to someone's consent being broken. And they call it Santa syndrome. And uh, you, as a human, are constantly reading people's features and trying to gauge where they're coming from and if they're safe, right? So if someone has a large nose, a giant mouth, and, you know, these crazy eyes, you can't tell what they're doing right you can't tell where they're coming from or what their next move is or anything right another thing is a lot of classic clowns are the colors of poison they're red and yellow and you know what i mean they have those poisonous colors so it's deeply ingrained that we would have that fear now a good friend of mine um and anybody into the clown pink should definitely check her out is uh lydia wilt and she was one of those people who got me into the whole scene in the first place. Uh, wonderful person, but I, I told her I was going to use this forever because it's so perfect. Uh, our goal as adult clowns is to turn your phobias into philias. I like that. Isn't it the most wonderful thing you've ever heard? I just, I told her, I was like, girl, I'm going to use this forever. You're so great. <laughs> it's like a phenomenal quote right there. That's fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so yep, I uh, I love it. So obviously there are silly parts to it and and sexy parts to it. How how do you balance those? Like in in a show, like I think you said you have a like you do fan base. I think is one of your one of your things. Right. There. So yeah, the fan base. I do a lot of lunar content, um, and I feel like, and if if you don't know what that is, that's uh, balloon play. So. Um, the whole idea behind it is seeing the pressure build and exerting the energy afterwards, right? It's like, um, it's almost, it's almost not sexual, but then it is, right? So that's, that's a lot of the clown is people who um, are more, more lighthearted. They don't want to see these hardcore things, right? But they still want that. They still want the like momentum to build. They still want the release, you know, so if I'm uh, doing a, a sit to pop, which is where you sit on a balloon and pop it that way, you know, you get that like, oh, like that moment of surprise and the drop down to the ground and stuff. And people are just people are sitting there waiting for that moment. So for me, I 
I find the art of the teas very sexy. And that's kind of what it comes down to is you don't have to be overtly spicy. You know, I don't have to, and this is obviously not a dig at anyone who does this because I know some people and they have beautiful bottoms. But my example is I don't have to have, you know, my, my bit this close to the screen in a close up POV. You know, if I could blow up a balloon until it pops and then confetti flies everywhere and people are just as pleased and just as satisfied as right. others. So it's a, it's a very gentle group. Um, the majority of them are incredibly respectful. Um, yeah, it's just like a, I don't know, it's very, it's a very sweet, it's a very sweet niche, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I love it. I don't have to balance it because I find, I find humor sexy and I find the art of the tea sexy. So for me, it doesn't, they all just kind of like flow together, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's great, you know, I mean, the, the, the humor aspect of it, a lot of people don't think about, but that's one thing you see on like everybody's dating profile or everything they're looking at somebody is a sense of humor. I mean, right. It sounds like we all might have a, a clown kink we just don't know about. <laughs> yeah, they and you just don't know about it yet, right? <laughs> <laughs> So let's say somebody does have that desire to, to maybe watch a clown burlesque show or watch you perform or, or someone else perform. How can they open up to themselves about it a little bit, I guess? Ooh, that's a great question. So um, if you're interested in things like balloon play, like lunar play, then I would suggest getting some balloons you know they're very cheap you can go to the like the dollar store and get yourself a bag of balloons and kind of experiment at home um you can blow up the balloons to pop them you can sit on them you can do um you know some people like the feeling of the latex that's also another thing too latex is a very popular kink and balloons are made of latex you know, so th those kind of things go hand in hand. So if you know that you're interested in latex already, it's very natural to move on to things like balloon play. Some people like the noise of the balloons. You know what I mean? I don't know what that is. I, I like to call it clown ASMR. You know <laughs> what I mean? Because it's just like some wacky ass noises coming from the balloons and stuff. I love but, I yeah. know what you're talking about. Yes, yeah, some people can't stand them, and then some people really love them. So I, I like to warn people, like on fan base and things, if I'm doing, I call them squeaky lives, where I don't have the music up very loud, and we're just kind of here, because I make, I, I do balloon twisting and stuff as well. So sometimes we make things, you know, I'm like, this is a squeaky live, so if you don't like that noise, you know, or this is a popping live, you know, you got to warn people, because it's a very sensory Clown is a very sensory thing. Absolutely. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> so how does how does one prepare? I'm sure it's similar and different at the same time between like your 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 daytime clowning and then your your adult side of clowning. And how how does the preparation you know compare and contrast there? Well, um, for kids clowning. To be perfectly honest, I have I have a playlist that I put on and it is like lo-fi circus music. It's very gentle makeup. Um, I've been told it's kind of reminiscent of uh, Lunette the Clown from Big Comfy Couch. You know, it's all very soft. Um, like I'm not trying to do any any phobic triggers, you know what I mean? So it's all very gentle, soft lines and things like that. Um, with the with confetti la cupcakes it's very it's it's a lot more sharper lines a lot more gems darker colors like i said um the clothing obviously is different um it's it's the same with character work and acting you know you have things that like help you get in character so for me a lot of it is music um the lighting i'll change when i'm getting ready for a kid's clown versus the adult clown um it's kind of it's kind of strange like i just have a like a couple of weird little things that help me get in character you know <laughs> excuse me well, that's that makes sense like you said the acting thing really it, it it 
adds that little bit of understanding to it. You know, they are just roles right. that you're playing, and it's you right. know, it is character work. It is important too. You know, I mean, if, if you're not yeah. passionate about it, obviously you're not going to do it to the best of your ability. So, I mean, having met you, I know that you're very passionate about what you do, and I love it. Thank you. I think it's awesome. Yeah, I think you're great too. And meeting you, by the way, I have to say, um, seeing the demonstrations on the spanking and the flogging inspired me to uh, not only plug uh, the lovely Jen's products at one of my burlesque shows, um, which Cabaret for a Cause has been really blowing up, the Vaude Vigilantes, which is my production company, has got a bunch of shows coming up, but this paddle this paddle i uh i realized why someone doesn't let people spank them at shows unless they really <laughs> trust them because i had somebody who does sca fighting like sword fighting uh ask if they could paddle me with this and wow wow it's wow wow it's it's a doozy. It's it's not for everybody. Paddles are definitely that not was for everybody. uh, it was hard to sit. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, my I, word! I'll stick to the flogger. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we did see the aftermath of uh, paddling when we were in Dallas from me. So I can only yeah. imagine somebody that does something professionally, you know, with with the wrist motions and stuff. How how that may turn out. <laughs> And he only, uh, he got me one time and I was like, nope, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm spent. I blew my whole wad. I'm sorry. I'm done now. Wow. A, a clown can only be so moist in front of a bar. You know what I'm saying? It's just rude. So rude. <laughs> so what do you feel like? Uh, <laughs> so what's your, your biggest uh, stigma from like the fetish side of it? What would you, you know? Do you have anybody that kind of assumes anything specifically when they come to you or? So there's a lot of people that think because you're a character that you don't have like boundaries or like limits. Uh, there definitely are those. Um, like I said, there's, there's like a lot of gross requests that come in. Um, and you know, I'm not uh, I'm not one to kink shame. There are just like boundaries that you don't cross. Um, so yeah, that's that's a that's a big stigma that I deal with. Um, and it's another it's another reason why I haven't actually said the um, kids character clown because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that will just assume things and then. Uh, you know, you can get you can get blacklisted from children's entertainment, and that's what I started with, and what my passion is. And I use adult clowning as an outlet, and it's a good it's a good money maker and things like that, and it's very fun, and I love it. But when it comes down to it, that you know, the other stuff is it deserves to be protected. So yeah, the stigma the stigma that the two coincide with each other is the worst. I can imagine, and it, it says a lot about you, and as well as other performers that that you may know. You know, drawing that line is very important. You know, yeah. in, in your own way, you still you are able to educate people. You know, right? You know, like this conversation, I'm sure you've had these conversations with other people to explain. You know, where the line is that doesn't get crossed, it does, and, and all those things. So, I think right. it's fantastic that you know. Yeah. I love that there's two sides of it. That's the, what I'm loving the most. Is is it's it's a coin, you know. It's literally two yeah, sides. It's, it's a duality. Thing. Yep, it's a duality, and I love it so much. And it's it's be it's beautiful because with with all art, you're trying to make people feel things, right? And as as an adult who is also a clown, I get to kind of like heal my inner child in a lot of ways because I get to have this like very adult outlet, but I'm still able to have fun. I'm still able to wear these like flashing patterns or make silly noises. You you have freaking squeaking boobs. You know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things where it's just like very, it's a very joyous thing. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. 
I wouldn't change it. <laughs> so do you have a favorite like, session style, I guess, in the adult aspect of things? Do you, do you have like a favorite type of show that you do? So recently, um, it's been burlesque. Uh, live shows with Cabaret for a Cause and the Vaude Vigilantes, I find uh, live shows to be so wonderful because you have that energy from the audience to feed off of as opposed to digitally, you know, you're sitting by yourself, you're like reading people's comments or, you know, getting uh, commissions via email or things like that. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of, it kind of makes it a little more boring. Mm -hmm. So the live shows for me are like, where is that? You know, you get people coming up and they're like, holy moly, I've never seen someone use giant googly eyes for pasties anymore. You get to, you get to have that like interaction with people. And that really is what I feel like clowning is about. You're trying to have that interaction and invoke emotions. And uh, it's nice to hear the laughter instead of people just typing LOL or something, you know? Right. It's nice. That 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 energy really matters, you know. I mean, in all kinds of forms, yeah, it does. Clowning, sports, you know, speeches and things like we do. That energy really, you know, even when we go to these shows and, and pride events and stuff and do our spankings, the first few minutes is like, okay, we're gauging it out, kind of just like bland, and then then it starts, and then we feed off that energy, and it just keeps building up until it's just a wonderful time. Yeah. It seems like that happens every time. So I can imagine it's it's kind of the same thing. Um, I imagine you still get a little nervous at the burlesque, but once the energy... Every time. <laughs> every time, because there's that expectation. You know, they're like, oh, what are, what are they going to do this time? You know, oh, last time last time they came out as Pee Wee Herman. Like, what are they going to do this, this time? You know what I mean? It's like one of those, <coughs> those expectations there, and you're like, oh, I might not, I might not live up to this expectation, but then as soon as the curtain opens and you walk out, um, it's it's different, you know, the character's on and whatever. So you might be like shitting your pants right up until the very moment you go on, but then you go on and it's like, you know, it's that moment of like, all right, this is what we're doing. This is it's worth it, and and then before you know it, you're done, you know. Right. You're like, I want to do more. Like, so. why why are we doing more? Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need another. I need another. I need another time spot, please. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> so now that I'm actually speaking to somebody that does clown work of, of all types, specifically, the whole world remembers, or at least the whole country remembers. In like uh, 2016, they had the scary clowns. It was mostly, I think, out here. Did that have any effect on what you do? Uh... Did things for you or what what kind of a listen here <laughs> listen here mister <laughs> um it was awful it was absolutely awful um especially as a kids entertainer uh world of haunt clowning is very valid and like around halloween i'm into it as well but it became trendy to be afraid of clowns and in 2016, when all those clown sightings were, happen were happening, I will tell you, I got not a single booking. Not a single booking as a clown. That was the year I had to start acting as one of Santa's elves. Uh, that was the year that, you know, you start doing princess parties and things like that because people were just, they, you know, were convinced that if you're a clown, you're going to come and try and, like, murder them or something. It's ridiculous. And the worst you know, part was absolutely everybody. ridiculous. All of those people who did that, you should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> well, it ended up being like just a few, but it became such an anticipated thing mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. people started reporting things they weren't seeing, and you know, just to, just so. And I think that kind of right. that top frame became the the look at me era, you know, where people realized they could get attention yeah. by saying things. So, so it, it kind of has railroaded into to what we have now, where everybody is look at me on social media, you know, I have this wrong with me. I do this better than anybody else, you know, that, that kind of thing. So I think we can point to that, to being a good starting point for, for some of those behaviors. But that's mm -hmm. fascinating that it, it you didn't get a mm -hmm. single booking. 
No, not a single one. Not a single dang one. And you know, it was that way for a lot of my friends as well. Even doing balloon twisting and stuff, you couldn't wear like a clown nose. So are there any resources that you know of for people to kind of learn more about the clown kink and what it involves and stuff like that? Yeah, so um, great question. Um, if you're looking to further your clown education, there are a lot of um, like ridiculously Billy, uh, Bill Murphy, he does um the clown lab there's the american clown academy uh that's for formal clown and eccentric clown uh if you'd like to uh further your clown education with myself i do offer uh workshops on how to explore those kinks um and explore the formal side of it as well um there are a lot of groups on facebook that are very helpful for budding clowns in the kink and non. Um, and there's a couple of Reddit groups too, but be careful with the Reddit over there. <laughs> be careful because, you know, they that, have a reputation. That is the <laughs> best of the internet for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of my stuff that had been stolen from the internet got posted on Reddit. So I'm not a huge fan of that spot but i've heard there are some great uh resources there as well <laughs> absolutely and as all things i mean it just takes doing a little bit of research and understanding what you've got going on and pulling what you need to know so is there anything specifically about like clown fetish and adult clown content that you want anybody to listen to this um, want them to know specifically. Um, if you are looking to explore it, like you want to try on some paint, or you want to play with some balloons, or if you're looking to explore, like you want to watch, uh, you want to watch a show, or you want to go over to fan base and check out a live stream. Just remember that the whole point is to make you smile and to satisfy the needs that you're putting forth. Uh, go in it with an open heart, go into it ready to laugh. Um, be prepared for some of it to be fairly cathartic at first because I noticed that when a lot of people get into it, they don't realize that they have certain bits of trauma that they didn't, they didn't know were affecting them so much and then through laughter and being in a safe place where you can smile and kind of be vulnerable with people i don't there are a lot of places where you go where people are taking their clothes off where it's not very um it's not very intimate in a way uh with clown you are giving people a space to shed those insecurities. So the whole style is with clown for me, it's like a philosophy. So you're taking all of these insecurities, the big nose or the little nose, uh, the giant feet, the clumsiness, you're taking all of these things and you're making them as big and relatable to as many people as possible. And so, in that you're realizing that you're not the only one with those insecurities you're not the only one feeling that way and it it brings a level of closeness and so if you're going to explore that be prepared to not only probably make some lifelong friends out of it but be prepared to like probably stick with it because it's very addictive to have fun and not take yourself that seriously and also be sexy while doing it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's worth it. And if you want to explore it, you know, uh, feel free to reach out. And yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great. And yeah, be prepared to laugh and have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there any, I know I'll get some links and stuff from you after 
Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But is there anywhere like people listening can find you specifically or anything that you do? I know that we have a, a separation of personas, but as far as Confetti the Cupcakes go. Right. Right. Confetti the Cupcakes you can find on Clapper and Fanbase. Uh, you can also find me on things like Twitter. Um, if you'd like to search for, uh, you know, I'm, ju I'm just going to do it. If you would like to search for my main character, which is Blueberry Baggins, um, I'm on Gig Salad and Clapper and all of those things. And I'm, we're moving into an education type of space. So feel free to ask questions and, uh, yeah, I just really appreciate you having me. I really, I look up to you so much, and I just think you're really great. Oh, thanks. And, like, when I started this whole concept of, of trying to get, you know, uh, and I'd call it, I am calling it the peep show, but, you know, to get, like, a little behind the scenes, a, a peek into to different aspects to bring light to different content and different fetishes and different lifestyles, you were the first person, as soon as I met you, I was like, yeah, got to got to got to talk. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's a lot of really wonderful clown performers out there. Um Snickersy, Lydia Will, uh there's uh there's there's so many. Maggie McMuffin is like one of my favorite and she's Miss Coney Island and anyway, I'll give you a bunch of links for a bunch of people. Absolutely. Um cuz there's a lot of clowns out there and where there's a clown for everybody you know what i mean <laughs> well if clowns would have looked like you growing up i would have been at the circus a whole lot more so <laughs> i i blame lunette the clown for me yeah i blame the big comfy couch for me i don't know what I happened that show like it was i didn't really and watch cool it. world cool world do you remember the movie cool world yes with brad pitt a young brad pitt yeah holly weird wow. yep Bring it back. See, this Steve is like Louise, clown fetish. It's everywhere. You just that, <laughs> that reconnection to it's the child. It's deep ingrained. Oh man. See now, obviously, my my favorite growing up was Bozo. You know, I love Bozo the clown to the point that he was yep. such a childhood hero of mine. When he died, I was just like a little bit sad, and I don't really get sad over like celebrity deaths. So I was just like, oh my goodness, like, that was a that's killing part of my right. childhood. What's happening here? Yeah, that was the same Robin Williams, Pee Wee Herman. You know, not all clowns have freaking noses, and it's it's a uh, the light goes away a little bit, you know. That's where so it's up to, to it you. It makes sense that you were a little sad. Yeah, that's where it's up to you and the rest of the clowns to to keep that light glowing and, and make it a little brighter. And we're gonna light the fire in your hearts and in your asses. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Miss Confetti, it has been a pleasure. Okay, so that was the interview with uh, Confetti, the cupcakes. I think it was a wonderful interview. Um, as the equipment gets better, the studio changes and stuff like that, things are going to look a lot better, sound a lot better. Um, but it is a work in progress. So, And the next interview may even be off of my phone like this is right here. So, So we'll see how it goes. And I hope you really enjoyed it, and I hope to hear from you. Be sure to tune in this Monday for Monday Munch. Um, we are talking about power dynamics and kink relationships. So yeah, come give your insight in the comments and chat along with us. And as always, people are welcome to join on the panel. I can't wait to see you there. I can't wait for the next episode, which should be um, about strippers, exotic dancers, whatever you want to call them. And we'll see how that goes. Love y'all.